You're listening to the Moose and the Loose, your 10 minutes action packed financial podcast with your host, Mikey Hu. Hey, what's up, Market Moose? This is Mike from the Moose on the Loose. I hope you are doing well on this uh, Thursday. Like, wow, that goes fast, I must admit. Um, I thought it were Wednesday for a second. So anyways, that's really what happened when you take a day off on Monday, right? Uh, so today, I want to talk about um, inflation numbers. I want to talk also about the interest rate, uh, Bank of Canada. So we're still at 5%. The next time the Bank of Canada will announce something will be on June 5th. So roughly in like what, in uh, two weeks from now, we're going to have another update uh, by Bank of Canada. Uh, latest inflation. Let's start with that and then we're going to move back on to the interest rate and see what's going to happen. So since the beginning of the year, we can clearly see that the uh, CPI, the total CPI, Consumer Price Index, that the Bank of Canada is following is slowing down. Uh we're getting pretty much close to that target of 2%, and it's definitely now between 2 to 3%. So in January of 24, we were at 2.9, followed by February at 2.8, then back to 2.9 in March and 2.7 in April. So we clearly see that there is a, a trend where some kind of like a, a, a smooth landing for the inflation. So we're not going drastic here. It's slowly going down, but now we're getting closer to a recession. The uh, economic growth has not has been that great in Canada for the past few months, but yet we are not in a recession. So maybe, I just say maybe because I believe that there will be a lagging impact here. We may avoid a major recession, but I mean, what I think here is, and I've been saying that for two years now, so don't don't quote me on that because obviously I'm not an economist, uh, but I do believe that we're going to end up into a recession. I don't necessarily think it's going to be a major one, but by raising interest rates like this, consumers are like slowing down their spending and that is reflecting on companies' earnings. We have seen that. I've talked about it on this show for several months now. And, and if like while economic data takes a long time to reflect those realities, when you talk about business owners and CEOs that are telling you consumers are shopping like they're coming less in our in our stores and they're spending less and they focus on essential goods, not going for discretionary expenses or extra expenses. Well, you get your answer that the economy is not exactly flying high. Uh, unemployment rate is starting to go higher up as well. So everything points toward an interest rate cuts, which I'm pretty sure everybody here hopes it's going to happen sooner than later. And there are, of course, rumors and chatters that we're going to have it on June 5th. But to be fair, a lot of investors thought that it would have happened a lot sooner in 2024. So we're already at midpoint in the year and we have not seen one single interest rate cuts. And there's a big reason why. That reason is called the Fed because I've been telling you this on this show for a long time. The Bank of Canada and the Fed, which is the central bank in the U.S., are dancing a tango. But I can tell you that the lead dancer is not the Bank of Canada. And one thing that could happen if the Bank of Canada cuts their rate faster than the U.S. is we're going to see our Canadian dollars keeps losing value um, versus the U.S. dollar, and that would be another thing. So as the economy is slowing down across the globe, the economy in the U.S. is doing pretty well. So that is also another problem that will put additional strength on their dollar. The fact that we sell a little bit less resources and potentially that we may be tempted to cut our interest rate before the U.S., that would also put additional pressure on the Canadian dollar value. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but unless you 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 trip a vacation, uh, unless you you're, you plan a vacation trip in the U.S. this summer. But long story short, 
The Bank of Canada may decide to hold on to the rate cut for one more month just to see what's going to happen uh, south of the border. Of course, there are a lot of indicators that is not doing that great on the other side, but still doing better. So that creates a lot of confusion and it makes Stiff McClam uh, jobs very difficult to manage at this point. So now as an investor, what's the impact here? Well, you probably saw that on the market already, but the expectation of rate cuts has been probably pretty much factored in all stock price and in the market. Uh, we, we saw that last fall when we started to see inflation getting under control the stock market already rose so i tell you before the stock market is looking forward so already with just that glimpse of the hope the stock market started to go up so when it will happen it's probably mostly baked in the stock price. So I don't expect much to happen whenever the Bank of Canada or whenever the Fed announced the interest rate cuts. Maybe a small movement, but the most of the money has been made already on that play. So now moving forward, what to expect is I do expect, because I mean, keep in mind, if there's an interest rate cuts, it also means that, yes, on one side, inflation is under control, but it also means that the, the economy is, is slowing down because if the economy is not slowing down, there's no reason to cut interest rates. And if we have that, that also means that, well, probably... A few companies will have a hard time. They will go through a, 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 a tougher period to grow their revenue, to grow their earnings. Their margin are going to be under pressure because we see, for example, a lot of retailers trying to sell their inventory. So um, going for more promotion, either cutting down their prices, spending more in marketing, but all of that will affect margin and will affect profitability as well. And when profits are affected, chances are earnings per share will be too. And well, you guessed it, since we we are used to see a company trading at pretty much a similar valuation from one year to another in terms of P.E. ratio, if the earnings drops, chances are the stock price will follow. So it's going to be a period where it's going to test you as an investor. It's going to test your strategy. It's going to test your conviction. So my advice here today is to go through your, 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 your portfolio and just review everything every single holdings you have and make sure that you have a strong conviction in your holdings. Make sure that you know exactly why you have those companies in your portfolio and try to cut down as much as possible all the, oh, I hope it's going to turn that up. I think it's going to be able to survive. Um, I just hope for another dividend increase. Try to keep hope uh, outside of your vocabulary and try to find how instead. So just transform the H, right? So instead of hope, try to define how a company can make it happen, can continue to thrive, increase their sales, maintain their profit, and of course, increase their dividend. If you're not able to find a scenario that is plausible that is like likely going to happen maybe it's time to let it go because it's not going to be easier in the next 12 months it's likely going to be harder so just food for thoughts for today um just make sure that you review your portfolio. It's well diversified. I mean, you know the classics, but I mean, those, those are classics because they work. If you have a, a portfolio that is well diversified and you are fully ends on and you know the reason why each of, of the stock in your portfolio are in, well, then you're golden. You don't have to worry about anything. And of course, it's not going to protect you from stock prices fluctuation, but it is going to protect you from panicking. So that's the thought for today, Moose. I hope that you will have a wonderful day going and we're going to talk again tomorrow for Business Friday. Take good care and don't forget to stay invested. Hey, welcome to Disclaimer. If you're listening to the Moose and the Loose, you cannot really expect me to give you buy or sell recommendation or financial advice, right? You're here for fun, you're here for information and some entertainment. But I am not your financial advisor, I am not your broker, so therefore I'm not liable if you're losing money after listening to the podcast. If you're looking for some advice, go see a professional. If not, you can enjoy the show and do your due diligence after it.